Of all the ways to die, we think we know where by toilet would be on everyone's list. It'd be low. So why, oh why, is the world of video games so seemingly obsessed with deadly toilets? And why do so many games go out of their way to set up situations where you can either kill or be killed in or by a surprisingly lethal commode? Toilets with ways of dispatching humans that somehow are more painful and shameful than Nate here lamping you senseless with a cistern lid. Just my pride. They're gonna need a plunger. They're gonna need a mortician, Nate. That man is dead. And so will you be if you get too close to these seven deadly toilets with a higher kill to death ratio than you. Mad World is a 2009 hack and slasher that goes out of its way to be edgy and ultra-violent, almost as if it knows that every single person playing it will have that Gary Jules song stuck in their head the entire time. In this black and white and red dystopia, your job is to commit creative and combo-rific murders, with points awarded for how cruelly you mangle your hapless foes. Jamming a signpost through a dude's head? Routine, but finish the job with a dumpster throw for a score worth writing home about. In Mad World, however, perhaps the most memorable and shocking environmental takedown involves a toilet. And if you think that's not saying much, this is a game where in the first 10 minutes, you'll play a minigame where you have 90 seconds to see how many men you can throw into a jet engine. <laughs> Stays with you, that. But not as much as your first toilet kill, which, like so many memorable messes, happens in a train station bathroom. Protagonist Jack can find several brawny baddies mooching around this public restroom. Baddies who, when grabbed and dragged to the bogs, can be, with a workmanlike swing of your Wiimote, forced into a toilet with a lethal pile driver. Mm, it's more like a Michinoku driver. Honestly, he watches WrestleMania once. Maybe a modified Falcon Arrow? It's not jamming a baddie into a toilet that's memorable, however. It's what the toilet does next that's burned into our memories forever. Down. Holy sh**! Yes, as if a hitherto unnoticed sewer alligator had suddenly snapped them up, your enemy is flash liquidized by what we will comfortably say is one of the most surprisingly deadly toilets in all of video games. We're not sure how or why these toilets perform this gruesome execution, unless maybe some Nutribullet parts got accidentally shipped to the toilet factory. But we are sure that Mad World has ruined toilets forever with its extremely deadly lose, with the only upside of this grim fatality being the Batman-style sound effect text when you perform it that reads, Swirly. I mean, I find it kind of funny. I find it kind of... sad? Damn it, Gary Jules! There are loads of things to watch out for in the wastelands of Fallout games. Raiders, super mutants, centaurs. The f that's not a centaur. Go watch Fantasia and then come back with a design that doesn't haunt my nightmares. F hell. Not only is the wasteland full of horrible monsters, but horrible traps, mostly of the landmine variety. But beware, they're not the only kind of booby trap out there. There are some lethal loos too. Now, you might be wondering why you'd want to use any of Fallout's loathsome looking latrines. But one way to get your health up in this game is by, um, drinking out of one. Which is a pretty good sign of how bad things have gotten. This health boost is at the expense of a little radiation and a lot of your dignity. But it can be a very useful last resort if you're out of food or health giving stim packs. However, try that with one of the toilets in Friendship Metro Station and you're in for a shock, literally. Yep, this privy is plugged in, with wires running straight into the bowl. If you're unlucky enough to drink when you're low on health, death by taser toilet. Still, could be worse, you could have actually used it as a toilet. Doesn't bear thinking about. Oh no, I thought about it.
You're in. Good work, 47. Agent 47 has many fancy ways to assassinate his targets, but one of his favourites involves porcelain. And no, we're not talking about a poison pot of tea. God, if only. Hitman players will be well used to hiding in bathrooms, waiting for their target to come in, and then drowning said target in the toilet. I mean, why get bogged down with elaborate plans when you can just plan to shove their head down a bog? Elaborately. Toilets cemented their position as Agent 47's partners in murder in the Japan level, where it's possible to make use of the futuristic toilets to distract people and draw their attention. But the deadliest WC of all can be found in the Marrakesh level, and it does most of the killing, meaning Agent 47 can keep his hands clean and dry. In the upstairs bathroom of the old school building, you can find this toilet right on the edge of a large hole in the floor, which surely breaks several building codes and must be desperately unpleasant for anyone using it. Or indeed on the floor below. The only way this guy was not going to become general was if he took a dump on the flag. Speaking of the floor below, underneath the hole sit two gossiping guards, and if you turn on the school intercom, your target, Razor Zaydan, will hear them bad-mouthing him and come to the bathroom to investigate. Those dogs are going to regret this. Fortunately for 47, General Zaydan doesn't see the danger in a potentially deadly toilet looming over his head. Or at least he's too angry at being disrespected to care. So when he walks directly beneath the hole to shout at his subordinates, why it would be so simple to just... Nice one, toilet. Don't think you're getting half the fee for this, though. It's so refreshing when a game is relatable. For instance, Half-Life 2 Deathmatch, whose multiplayer shoot-em-up avatars aren't your Fortnite-style well-groomed super soldiers, but are just like you and me. Ordinary folk who would absolutely die if a two-seater sofa was fired into them at high speed. These kinds of physics shenanigans are standard in Deathmatch, which borrows the physics-defying gravity gun from Half-Life 2 and transposes it to a competitive environment, so you can brutally dispatch other players not just with pistols and machine guns, but with, oh, I don't know, a, a fold-out chair. Ow! But one ordinary object found in the game has proved a more popular improvised weapon than any other. No prizes for guessing which, this is a list about deadly toilets, and we're not made of prizes. That's right, the most famous weapon in the game is the Humble Toilet, which once ripped from a wall with a right click on the gravity gun, can then be pinballed into the centre mass of your foes with a simple left click. For what is, if your aim be true, almost certainly an instant kill. Both wince-inducingly painful and inescapably hilarious, killing somebody with a porcelain projectile is easily the most famous way to rack up a kill in this 2004 shooter. It's in Half-Life 2 Deathmatch's Steam description, it's even on the main menu. The toilet kill is literally iconic. As in, it's literally the icon you see when you get any physics kill in the game. In a game featuring rocket launchers and a crossbow that shoots red-hot lengths of rebar, the Humble Toilet is still one of the most dependable weapons in the game, the Half-Life 2 physics engine working overtime to simulate, probably quite accurately, what happens to a corridor of humans when they have roughly 88 pounds of porcelain pinged into them at god knows how many miles per hour. The only drawback to the toilet is that it's not so terribly effective at long range. But I mean, that was always going to be a crapshoot. Did we use that joke already? We didn't! Hot dog. <laughs> Ready to be all done breathing? Batman's Enforcer, how adorable. I'll enforce my foot right up your laugh track! Begin. The Injustice series answers the question, how cool would it be to see a legendary Amazonian warrior fight a giant hyper-intelligent gorilla? Extremely... cool. But alas, it's not all highbrow ape fights, because in Injustice 2, there is one stage that brings down the tone, plumbing depths of toilet humour unseen in the DC universe since the unpopular run of the fabulous Fart Boy comics in the 1940s. Admit it, you want to Google it to see if it's real. Injustice 2 allows you to use environmental attacks against your opponents, whether you're smashing them over the head with a sign, kicking them into a hanging cage, or throwing a bench at their face. 
but send your opponent flying through the stage transition in Arkham Asylum, and you'll open up a toilet-based attack that you're probably not going to see in a Zack Snyder movie anytime soon. Harley Quinn wins. You're in for it now, Joker. Finishing off a fight with the toilet is definitely a statement. But what is even more of a statement is if you do this as a hero with super strength, whereupon they rip the thing out from the tiles and hurl the loo at their poor opponent's face at super speed. <laughs> to be honest, that's where I'd throw in the towel. Or at least, ask for a towel so I could go and have a nice long shower. You. Saints Row the Third clearly believes in saving the best for last. Why? Because it is only once you have completed the game that you can go into your wardrobe and freely turn yourself into a toilet. Did you talk to my agent? Or what did she say? I, ha I have to do it. More like Saints Row the Turd. Call Patricia back. Incredibly, there is a somewhat reasonable explanation for this crappy clothing. The costume first appears in a mission in the Dataverse when your avatar doesn't load in properly. What's with that toilet? Oh my god, that's me! It's later awarded to you for finishing the game, meaning that you can take on enemy gangs while taking the form of, we remind you, a literal toilet. You might think that nothing could be more embarrassing than having your life ended by a sentient piece of bathroom furniture wielding a firearm. Was it too much for you? But that's because you've never countenanced having your life ended by a sentient piece of bathroom furniture doing a close quarters takedown. There's nothing more silly than seeing someone getting absolutely lamped by a lavatory. Or ground pounded by a privy. And never in my life did I think I'd see a toilet doing a pile driver. But of course, I always hoped. You can't help but feel for the poor gang members, who signed up for a life of crime but never dreamed that would involve getting their bones shattered by a heavily armed toilet. You almost want to give them a hug. Almost. I mean, not really. They've got gross toilet water all over them. Ew. Many games will try to ensnare you in deadly traps. You've already seen the rigged toilet in Fallout, or consider the deadly ceiling-mounted battering ram in Skyrim. Huh. Really thought that would be more impressive. Indeed, traps like this would get no more than a derisive laugh from Deception 4, a weird game that, like others in the Deception series, is exclusively interested in luring enemies into traps that you, the player, tactically place around an arena. Your job is to set and activate the traps to deal the most damage, bouncing your hapless enemies from one ludicrous set piece to another in the kind of death trap Rube Goldberg might have designed after breathing too many paint fumes. After all, why crush your enemies with a battering ram when you can so easily have a springboard spring them onto the exact spot under a falling boulder before a giant yo-yo swings in and fires them into the air, also tearing off all their clothes so they're defenseless when they land on the hot plate and get sprung once more into the air, this time onto the spot where a pointy horse comes up that pins them in place just long enough for the swinging axe to send them spinning into the second phase of the trap, which features, you guessed it, a sideshow bob rake that leaves them too disoriented to spot the bear trap that's going to keep them stationary until the mechanical knight completes its lap for the left-handed mace hit that sends them onto the horse's head and into the sky for the right-handed sword thrust, then probably keep it simple to finish, I'm thinking, just a spinning throw onto an ornamental fountain. Yeah! It's understated, is what I like about it. Of all the carnivalesque traps in this bizarre game, perhaps none is quite so striking as the B-Day toilet. This oversized lavatory ensnares enemies before its B-Day nozzle sends them flying with an embarrassing whistle sound, both dealing impressive damage and setting up the next in your series of over-engineered traps. As if that wasn't enough deadly toilet action, as a pre-order bonus, players could also unlock a golden toilet trap. 
Here it is being comboed with the rake in order to fire someone called Olivier into the path of an oncoming train, obviously. Come on, Olivier, how did you not see that coming? So we finally did it. Oh, the thank God, it's over. We finally did it, the list of deadly toilets. <laughs> what now? What, what now? And Alexander wept, for he had already done the list of deadly toilets. It's done, you can stop suggesting <laughs> it. Well, we could do a commenter edition, that's one thing. Oh. If you, yeah, if you can think of other deadly toilets in games, put them in the comments. Don't do that. And we'll make this video again. Please don't. The, I, the, it, it's in your hands now. The ball is in your court. And in the meantime, why not watch some of these other videos and subscribe if you enjoyed this. Alright, get into the comments, I want to do this video again. Videos that aren't about toilets, watch them.